left yeah. to its own devices, you're less neuroplastic as you get older. Exactly. So young brains are extremely neuroplastic. And in, when you're after your mid-20s, you have to switch it on. You have to consciously do things to switch on this state that makes you more neuroplastic so that way you can be better at absorbing that information. Right. And practical things you can do to switch the neuroplasticity back on. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, absolutely. Can you take us through a couple? Um, attention. Attention is a really important function. If I was to ask our dear listener to clasp their hands together and think of the contact between their fingertips together, Mm -hmm. you'll suddenly be aware of how cold your hands are, you know, maybe um, how bony your fingers are or how maybe soft your hands are. And you weren't aware of any of that a moment ago. And what that really means is that we can choose how much attention we pay to something. So when we're actually paying attention to something, we're much more likely to retain that information in the long term. And the, I guess the cruel thing is, is that modern day society has eroded our attention Why? span. As soon as you said attention, I went, oh no, with, I've always got a phone in one hand. You know, there's a, at least one screen on the go. Exactly. And this um, context switching that happens when we scroll through social media. So Context switching, what I mean by that is looking at different unrelated bits of information. So you're looking at an ad and then you're looking at a birthday story and then someone's got a cat video and then more ads and news. You know, that context switching results in experimentally measurable attention deficits. So I'm not saying it causes ADHD, but science tells us that more than an hour of phone use in teens results in attention deficits. And I mean, who uses their phone for less than an hour? Mobile phones are changing people's brains. Yeah, they are. And in ways that we can't really anticipate. Because the studies that people did using like screen time 10 years ago, we didn't have phones in the same way we did now. No, you know, you're playing snake for a long yeah. time. Yeah, and, and screen time back then, like there's, there's lots of studies now saying that screen time 10 years ago, the kids who are like 10 years old now, they've got, you know, these attention deficits and all that sort of stuff. So what about... Now, this current generation's kids who grew up with social media type stuff, you know, this constant, you know, barraging of different information, mm. unrelated information, what's that going to do? And we don't know. Across multiple platforms simultaneously. Absolutely. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit scared, to be honest. As a neuroscientist, this is really at the fore of my mind all the time. Like, we don't know what the impacts of these things are going to be us in the long term. Right. Using it, but using it in a way that it does the least harm. Yeah. That's right. I mean, who knows what that is? I guess at this point, um, moderation is key. As in Mm. all things. Yeah. Dr. Lila Landowski with you on ABC Radio Hobart and ABC Northern Tasmania, ahead of her TEDx talk on Saturday morning where she is uh, sharing the secrets to productive learning as backed by neuroscience. What's another one? Well, I thought I might actually elaborate a little bit more on attention just briefly. yeah, Because the things we can do to actually improve our attention. Oh, okay. Yeah. So um, if we want to improve our attention in the long term. Is it irony that I'd moved on too quickly? (laughs) (laughs) I wasn't holding your attention, Helen. Oh. Um, yeah, so, I mean, we can do things like focused attention meditation, which in the long term, there's evidence that that can help your attention. But actually, the secret's really simple. It's exercise. I know, like, how many times do our doctors say we need to do more exercise? But exercise increases the size of the memory region of your brain. It increases the number of neurons in the memory region of your brain. Moderate exercise increases your memory. It increases your cognition, so your ability to think generally speaking, and 20 minutes of moderate exercise, so not intense exercise, just moderate exercise, will improve your attention for about two hours afterwards. That's why people who go to the gym before work, and I wish I was one of those people, they have an advantage because they can pay more attention at the beginning of their work day and get more things done. I'm more likely to turn up later in the day though. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, I've just been to the gym now, so I'm feeling very well attended to this interview right now, but I mean, gosh, oh. People who do gym in the morning uh, are winning. So you really, um, if you're going to sit down to learn, what you should do is go for a jog. If you're at work and you have to learn, go up and down the stairs. And it's even better if you challenge your balance. So, I don't know, do some star jumps or something. We know that that is going to make your attention span even better. Right. 20 minutes is enough. 20 minutes. Leela. It's probably less, to be honest, but that's just what the study did. Okay. (laughs) 